Help us out, planet people. Please collect your belongings and place trash in the bins near the exits as you leave. Thank you. During our presentations, a microphone will be located in the aisle to the right of the stage for questions. When prompted by the moderator, please line up single file. Please have your question ready when approaching the mic, and remember, do not ask for hugs, autographs, kisses, or voicemail message recordings. Thank you for making history with us at Planet Anime Kansas City. While we don't clear the room between panels, in order to sit in the reserved section, you'll need to... All righty. Hey, everybody. How we doing, Kansas City? Right on. Have you guys had a good time so far today? Yeah? All right. Well, here's how it's going to work. We're going to do our next Q&A. We're going to get started in just a second before we do a couple housekeeping things. Number one, please no video recording of the Q&A session. And number two, please no flash photography during the session. We don't want to get blinded. If you want to take photos, just turn the flash off, please. Uh, other than that, if you guys want to scoot towards the middle and fill in those seats, feel free to do so. Again, seating is open now. The reserved seating is, uh, that period is ended. So if you want to move around, you can. Uh, also, this is a Q&A, so you'll have an opportunity to ask questions, so don't think you're going to offend anybody by getting up and moving around. We actually want you to do that. There will be a microphone for y'all right over here. Makes sense? Everybody cool with that? Anybody got a problem with that? If so, there's the door. No? Okay, good. <laughs> well, let's get going then. We have brought for you the cast of Ruby. Please put your hands together and welcome Aaron Zeck, Kara Eberly, Barbara Dunkelman, Lindsay Jones, and Michael Jones to the stage. Oh, we forgot to remove a chair and start the music. I'm sorry. Oh, we we're gonna do music. I'll chairs. stand. I'll stand up front with the microphone the whole time. <laughs> So again, uh, we will get through as many questions of yours as we can in the short time we have together. If you have a mobility issue or maybe you just don't want to go to the microphone, just kind of wave and flag me down and I will bring a microphone to you so you can still participate with us as well. Uh, let's get started. First of all, it's been just over a decade now Stop. of Ruby. No. <laughs> Talk to us about the journey for the past 10 years. Could you, I mean, nobody ever thinks it's going to be, any project is going to be as big as it is. But here we are a decade later. We have you guys back in Kansas City with us to talk Ruby again. Talk to us a little bit about your, your path over this past 10, 11 years. Well, we started voicing the characters when we were 13, so. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you okay? Anyone who left, I, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I had the question there. I was like, wait a minute, did we? Did we? That would make us 23. Yeah, I know. That would be so <laughs> cool. That would be so that's nice. What we are, that's how old we are. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> in my 20s. Mm -hmm. well, I feel like everyone's probably going to have similar answers, but, like, one, you're totally right. Like, no one would have expected this show to be uh, anywhere near, like, su as successful and just, like, global as it is. We have a huge audience, and, like, we can't thank you guys enough for watching. And the fact that we're here 10 years later is, like, surreal. Um, not many voice actors get to say they played a character for 10 years straight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How important was it to you as a group to continue on following the creator's death, Monty's death, during 
season three? How, what was the, was there a, like a rallying moment of like, yes, this is important. We continue doing this. Or was there ever a thought of, you know, of like, wow, I, I don't know. We've lost the vision or, um, yeah. There was never a question mm -hmm. about yeah, it. Um, I think, you know, I, I think Monty would be very upset if the show didn't continue, and I think everyone wanted to do it justice and continue his creation and his vision. Mm -hmm. And obviously he created Ruby with Miles and Carrie and the whole team behind him, so right. they just wanted to continue on. And I'm, I'm very happy we did, and I know that he would be very grateful we did. I feel Absolutely. like he'd be haunting us if we didn't. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> like we genuinely, yeah. the energy that he would put forth be like, wait, I took you so many years to get. Yeah, yeah. We definitely <laughs> wanted to carry on the legacy for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Let's because we do want to get you guys your questions in. Let's go to the floor. Go ahead and stand up. Tell us your name. Uh, hi guys. Um, my name is Connor. It's uh, great to see you. Hi, hi. Connor. What is um, your question, bud? My question is, over the years, you've discussed what your dream crossover would be, what your dream ship would be. I want to switch things up a little bit. Who would your dream guest star be? Oh, my gosh. I mean, we've already had the opportunity to work, like, I just have to shout them out, like, with so many amazing voice actors that are, like, A-list, like, God tier that I watched as a kid. So uh, it's hard to choose. Like, can we? Can I be crazy? Be like Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an appropriate answer. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my answer. Um, the parents of Bluey. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the man's name, but the Chili is Bandit. Melanie. Melanie. Bandit. Oh, I know Bandit's name. I don't know the voice actor's name. Oh, okay. They have to be Dog Faunus. That yeah. That's a must. Yeah. But Mel Melanie Zanetti, I think, is her name. But we don't know the identity of the children. <laughs> I've, I'm still working on jet lag, so I'm gonna be a little weird. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're weird. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but you think Michael? Um, I, I would like to have um, Dave Willis, who plays Meatwad in Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Bruh. I think that'd be good. I think my hot object in this Ruby world. <laughs> there we go, you have yeah. right now. <laughs> I, got, I got a semblance, and it's the power of meat. <laughs> this brings me so much also joy. Good. Meatwad, run! Oh <laughs> the Grim are coming. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's Grim. <laughs> Grim. Carl? He's like, Carl? He's, he's like also a, Meatwad's also a gun. So he just shoots off like oh, he, he can do anything. Yeah. He can do anything. Meatwad cannon. The possibilities are endless here. I, got, I love this. This show writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, as a huge Simpsons fan, I would love to have Hank Azaria. Oh yeah. Good. Yes. Or any voice actor from The Simpsons would be like insane to me. There, there you go. <laughs> Classic. Awesome. I'd want Hank to be his Birdcage character. Have y'all seen the Birdcage? You mean Agador, Agador yeah. Spartacus? Yeah. Yes. So fantastic. You just scratched the A. <laughs> me personally, I would love to see David Tennant on the show one day. Oh. <gasps> yes. Yes. I mean, he has worked on another Rooster Teeth yeah. project, he was yeah. in Genlock. Yeah, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty surreal that he was on it. The Macy Williams from Game of Thrones was on it. I mean, we had a ton of different voice actors. I'm going to go real crazy. Dakota, Dakota Johnson. Dakota. Yeah, Dakota Johnson. No, Dakota Fanning. Dakota Fanning, sorry. I, oh I'm going to go real crazy. Both. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. <Johnson>. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> just just yeah. as Morgan Freeman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here we see the Ruby Girls. <laughs> <laughs> They're fighting the okay. Grim. <laughs> He just narrates the whole show. As a, I would love it. Oh, David Attenborough. Yeah. Uh, from uh, 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 the the, planet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our yeah. planet. Yeah. yeah. Planet Earth. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Here wow. we see the da da da. I don't. I can't think of anything. <laughs> team Ruby is approaching Beacon once more. Yeah. <laughs> Their young the teenage hormones are. <laughs> Here we see Sun. Nowhere to be found in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Existing in vacua somewhere. <laughs> we await his return with bated breath. <laughs> we see him all alone, Could eating his corn chips. <laughs> There's going to be a spinoff soon called The Rising Sun, and it's about his return to the show. Oh, my gosh. It's pretty impressive, yeah. She's <laughs> making that up, by the way. Don't I, expect no, I know. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Manifesting. If you, if you I'm sorry. If you're tweeting that right now, that's not real. <laughs> Exclusive Ruby panel information. I know. <laughs> Someone at Viz is like, what are you saying? I'm like, rising sun. I don't know. I guess really we I guess we have to make this show. Somebody greenlit this? Yes. That's why we don't video record our panel. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that out there. Thank you. Good question. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. 
Sophia. Who's next? Hello. So How are you? Oh, you good. emerged you? from the shadows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is your name? Um, my name is Alexia Watson. Hi, Alexia. Hello. Hello. What's um, your address, Lexi Watson? Um, uh, well, I could tell you, but that'd be weird. I can What's tell you. What's your social security number, Lexi Watson? <laughs> Okay, What's the last four digits of your it's credit card, Lexi Watson? <laughs> <laughs> what is no. your question, Lexi Watson? Okay, this is my question. Um, if you were to do further down the road a Ruby rewatch podcast, what would what which volume would you be most excited to look back at, and why? That's a great question. Oh boy, yeah. honestly, probably one, just because it makes me cringe so much. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like there's so much about it that has like a nostalgia to it. And right. because it is just so ridiculous, like Blake's walk when she walks away, like, ma'am, put that away. <laughs> um, Bella booty. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it, it was just very over the top, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know any better. I would love to watch and like one people. and the nine back to back. Oh yeah. yeah, that'd be crazy to see what, like just one that really in the nine like, oh. back to back. That would be cool. The yeah. really the quick like, jump. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I would say, I mean, it's a, like I have different favorites, so it depends if like, oh, do I want to watch a favorite volume back or do I want to watch one that like a lot of stuff happened? Um, I'd probably pick volume three, just because I feel like that volume was such a major turning point for Ruby um, as a series and just like the whole vibe of the show. Um, but yeah, I I would choose that one. Yeah, I think I'd have to say th three also. Like, one and nine are phenomenal, and very much, like, two of my favorites for very different reasons. But three is, like, a really cool tournament arc. Yeah. I love seeing all the different fighting styles from other um, other teammates from other schools as well, and revisiting some of the most traumatic incidents that happened in Ruby and some of the first traumatic incidents. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> Trauma. <laughs> Welcome to the therapy session, guys. Here we go. I think I, think I would watch uh, probably eight or nine and I would just try and take notes from uh, Yang and just see where Sun went wrong. <laughs> like, what could he have done differently? You know what I mean? Like, just, 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 just so he sleeps a little better at night. Like, <laughs> now nah, I get it. I see. There was nothing he could have done differently. Sun is Knuff. He is yeah, Knuff. He is. <laughs> he is. His job is beach. There, I want to say something so bad, but it is not say it. appropriate. Say it. No. Do it. No, just say it. Say it. it. Say it. Say, say it, it, say it. it. He doesn't have a v v hoo hoo. Uh, <laughs> that's true. Hoo -hoo. Yeah. That's true. I tried to like make it. And we appreciate that. Yeah, you did. That. Yeah. You, you did. The hoo -hoo. <laughs> that's the the medical term. The <laughs> <laughs> hoo hoo. This is why we can't ban books, kids. <laughs> oh my god. Is, is there a particular uh, a season that you would be most interested in hearing in the uh, podcast? Flipping the question. Yeah, well, oh yeah. My goodness. Um, I mean, I have a lot of comments on a lot of them, but oh. my answer is kind of very, I would want to hear four or six. Um, four because that's when the animation style changed. Um, we went into a different arc, so you wrapped up your first arc. Um, the team was separated, and 13-year-old me could not handle that whatsoever. <laughs> but, oh, showing my age a little bit there, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, probably four. And then six, I would like to comment on uh, music-wise. Okay. I have a lot of music moments in volume six, and that's why I would want to watch. Noted. Yeah. Good job, I might have to rewatch the whole thing again. Yeah. You're making me want to watch my own You know, film. if you do that, um, I happen to be a film student at the University of Kansas. Uh -huh. um, oh. So, you know, just a little, little plug there. <laughs> just, 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 just at least invite me on, be like, oh, you know. So you just get to <laughs> analyze. Yeah, but cool. Wow. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, Lexi. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's cool. Hello. School. Hello, folks. How are you today? Good. What is your name? Fantastic. I'm, I'm Xander. Hi, Xander. Hi, Xander. Nice to meet you. Hi. Um, I wanted to know, uh, at what point when you were doing your characters, you thought, my God, this is either me or therapy. me. Did you say this is me or this is therapy? No. or Because okay. <laughs> no, that's two different or, questions. Well, no. <laughs> like, you have become the characters or the characters are now truly a part of you. Oh, man. Mm. Uh, I mean, like we're in a unique position, too, where, like, Monty knew us and kind of, like, it was a little bit of a symbiotic relationship that like a lot of the characters' personalities became part of our personality and vice versa. Like my social anxiety and awkwardness is totally like why Ruby has a lot of that also. So I resonate with that. 
I think even early on, volume one, when she first goes to school and meets Weiss and is just getting chewed out, I was like, oh my God, this is my high school experience. This is <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I drop my books and people are mad at me. Oh no. <laughs> Which I would never do, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Kara's also much more like Ruby in real life. She's very bubbly and friendly, yeah. so. Definitely not like Weiss in that respect. In real life, I would have helped you pick up your books. Thank well, you. we did talk this morning as we were leaving the hotel. You were carrying a bunch of books that you thought I would slap them out of your hand. <laughs> because I, I, I certainly would. would. <laughs> and Lindsay's like, I, I pick them up. Um, I don't have my answer yet. Where else go? Um, I, 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 no, no, I don't know. <laughs> That's, it's, it's hard to answer because um, when, when, when Blake and I first met, um, I was considerably more outgoing, I think, maybe. I don't actually know. I don't know who I was. I think you're still finding yourself. You know what? I think I am. We're all just trying to find ourselves. Ever um, and But I don't know. She and I, I, I think I realized this after the fact. Um, but we went through some really unfortunate, like, life parallels. Uh, so that, for me, was like, whoa, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> so it may have been therapy in that case. Kind of Did work it? through some of those emotions via the character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe not some of the situations. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that. <laughs> If it's uh, if you can make an answer, answer it's cool. It's hard to know where Barbara ends and Yang begins. <laughs> we are one. Um, no, I think I think you know as Lindsay mentioned, I think all the characters were written in a certain way that really matches a certain element of our personalities and that takes inspiration from us. And so, I feel like some of us maybe relate to our characters a little more and want to be our characters a little more. Um, I, uh, Yang is so cool. I want to ride a motorcycle. Only I don't, because I'm too scared to ride a motorcycle. Uh, so yeah, I love her. She is me and I am her. I, I, I do remember in, in volume three, there's a scene, it's uh, the Vital Festival. And I think, uh, I don't remember if it was Yang or one of the characters, one of y'all says, uh, Weiss, I've never seen you this happy before, or excited for the Vital Festival. And Weiss says, oh my gosh, the amount of planning and organization is simply marvelous. And I really, like, I think that, that reminded me of That's when Kara. we were doing stuff for RTX and planning and that kind of stuff. So that was something that I was like, oh, yay. Weiss does appreciate things, you know, people do and all the work and planning. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, for me, early on, uh, I kind of identified with Son, at least as kind of far as his personality goes. But I was like, Ugh. Blonde hair, buff guy, ripped abs, that'll never be me. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just took about nine years later. And now I am son. You're in your final form. I'm, I'm in my final form. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slowly trying to become all of the characters that I voice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does, is Sting is also blonde, right? He is blonde, uh, yeah. and he does have great abs. Yeah. Though. Michael used to joke about being typecast, and we'd be like, ha, 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 ha. But now we're like, oh, hang on. No, actually, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's so funny. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. I like books and girls. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think of. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. What is your name? I'm Vicki. Um, and my question is, if you guys could write a chibi episode, what would you do? A beach episode. Yeah. Beach. Yeah. yeah. OK. Someday we will have a beach episode. Beach episode. Someday. <laughs> Beach, my, beach my episode word. with the junior detectives. <laughs> yes. I think I think like a beach episode with like everybody, like not just Team Ruby. Oh no, I know. We're just solving a crime oh. at the beach episode. There's <laughs> you a see lot of footprints going. in the oh, sand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who left these footprints? <laughs> that immediately get washed away. Yeah. <laughs> and Neptune just running from the incoming tide. <laughs> First thing that came to mind was I want to put Blake um, in that mansion the night Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. Oh, okay. I just want to know what, what Blake would have done, and it would have been something like weird and fun. That was my first thought. Not sure why. So like, <laughs> screw you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna go write uh, a horror. I mean, some of the chibi episodes are just like focused on one or two characters. So yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. So put it in a weird situation. Let's go hang out with Mary Shelley. I'd want to do a really fun, like, 
shopping or like runway type episode where we all try on like fun different outfits and you see like shopping montage. Oh, shit. Yes. Like a, yeah. Montage. Exactly. Yeah. That would be so fun. Some dress to impress. Yeah. Some yeah. new outfits. Exactly. Okay. Good. We like it. What not to wear. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking about like, oh my god, I love what not to wear. Um, <laughs> such a good show. It was such an aggressive <laughs> show too. Oh my Just god. thinking about like anime tropes because Barbara mentioned the beach episode. Um, I feel like Ruby's got to get a driver's license, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing of the Dragon Ball Z driver's license episode yeah. that makes no sense. But then I pivoted to that we should do a go kart racing episode in Mario Kart style. Yes. Where we all have our own little cars. I'm in like a banana machine or something. That, that's yes. be really. That yes. would be a good that's one. Cute. That all about like it. Yang would smoke them. <laughs> <laughs> it turned in very quickly into like a double dash situation. Too. <laughs> I'm all about it. Hey. Viz, are you listening? Entrepreneur <laughs> down there. Ruby and Fortnite. It. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet it. Good question. Thank yeah, you. thank you. I like that people exit. are still tweeting Ruby for Smash. I'm like, I don't listen. We can dream big, guys. But. <laughs> Hi, Hi, what is your name? Um, my name's Rem. Hi, Rem. Um, I was, uh, what was the most emotionally taxing scene for y'all to record? Emotionally taxing? I uh, straight up started crying um, during some of the recordings for volume nine, surprise. Uh, and a lot of it was either her speaking to her mom, uh, like post-mortem, obviously, um, or just like her coming into herself and her journey. I know we talked about like how voice acting the show sometimes can, it's not, it, not, it isn't therapy. Voice acting is not a replacement for therapy, but um, it was very therapeutic at the time because it was, uh, I think we were all going through a lot and uh, volume nine was very much like a more, more of a personal connection for me. So yeah, that was like, I wouldn't say emotionally taxing, but it was definitely like very sentimental and still holds a very special place in my heart. Yeah. I think th I think sometimes it could cause you to go to therapy. Is it that too? <laughs> depends, depending Very on true. how intense the scene is. You're not wrong, like Michael. Uh, for me, I think it was just the real, the most difficult, like emotional problem was all the sexual tension between Son and Blake's mom. Because <laughs> you're you're friends God. and you don't want to cross the line, but like. <clears throat> Very true. This is Phil. Stupid. Blake's mom. Look, Akatar's big right now. Akatar's big right now. I'm almost done with the last book. I've oh read them all. God. What? I'm on. I've, I'm halfway through the last book. Michael, why didn't you tell me this? I what? just started it about two weeks ago. Akatar, <laughs> shut the front door. Yeah, I started listening it, to it on the way back from the wedding. How, are you gonna read Throne of Glass? What's up? You're gonna, you gonna read Throne of Glass? That's next. Crescent City. No, Crescent City is probably next, but that's Iron Flame. Let me just tell you, that fifth book is a little. Fourth way. It's a little too much. I have a little no too wait, idea. the fourth book is too much. No, no fifth. The fifth book. Nessie. Sil Silver Flames. <laughs> Nessie and. Nessie is not for, spoilers. Not for children. Yeah, this is not the panel for that. What are we talking? <laughs> what are we talking about again? Oh, emotionally draining scenes. <laughs> <laughs> it's emotional. What? When two fictional characters love each other very much. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, the Prince of Merchants shows up at the end of the war <laughs> to fight for his three daughters that he never fought before. Michael, Come spoiling, on. you're spoiling so many things for people who haven't read it yet. Years old. I'm sorry, catch up. <laughs> They'll make a series. It's very beautiful. Um, for me, personally, I would say the scene in volume five with Yang and Raven in the vault. Um, to me, that's one of my favorite scenes in all of Ruby, um, and it was very emotional, and it was, it was really tough for me as a voice actor because I'm very fortunate to have a good relationship with my parents, and so, like, having to be in a scene where I'm basically, like, talking to a mother figure in that way was challenging, but I think when you get to have a scene like that where you're out of your comfort zone as a voice actor, it's really fun. Um, and to kind of get to try something new. So I love that scene, and I loved yelling at Anna Hullum, who is the sweetest person in the world, <laughs> playing the worst mom. It's just such a funny juxtaposition. Yeah, I kind of picking back, or so similarly, um, I'd say for me, like volume four, when Weiss is, it, the, the scene where she's with her dad in the room and she loses her heiress title, um, that was really, it was difficult to, to get into an emotion that I, hadn't really experienced, but also know that so many people have experienced um, and how important that is to portray and, you know, connect. So that was really, it was really hard and it was very, it was really emotional, but uh, and especially at the very end when she's talking to Whitley 
and just thought, like, Willie, how could you? It was so, I, I was imagining, you know, the situation happening with my own family and my brother, and I just, it, it, was, it was really hard, but I hope that, you know, I did it justice and I'm not okay. Honestly, I, like, emotionally taxing. The only thing I can really think of is when Blake and Yang are lying on the floor after Yang gets her arm chopped off. Yeah. Um, the I thought you were about to talk about a scene that I didn't know existed. And I was like, <laughs> I know. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. and so in Akatar. <laughs> this is not what this panel is supposed to be. <laughs> um, anyway. So yeah, that one, whenever Blake is crying and apologizing, that one was, it was a very short moment, but that one is devastating some, though. Some, yeah, some sadness. Is there a particular scene that wrecked you as a viewer? That's a big question. Um, the scene in volume nine where Neo is trying to get Ruby to drink the tea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's brutal. Right. That's such a brutal so scene. Good. Yeah. You did so good. Thanks, guys. Thanks. 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 Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, what is your name? Hi, uh, my name is Lillian. Um, my question is, so basically y'all got a chance to go back and revisit uh, season one when y'all recorded for uh, the anime Ice Queendom. So what was that like? Like, did you make any, any changes and what was it like to like revisit the character back at the beginning before all their trauma? <laughs> <laughs> uh, doing Ice Queendom was like alternate universe, Ruby. It was so weird because I think all of us are so familiar with season one because Obviously, it was the first season of Ruby and our first time like voice acting big characters like this. Um, and so I think a lot of us know those lines and our delivery of those lines like so well at this point. So going back and having to perform it as a dub this time was very strange because a lot of things had to change to fit the mouth movement of the characters. So some lines had to adjust just a little bit. So it felt very uncanny valley. Mm. Um, but it was also like very challenging to try to get your head out of your initial performance of those lines to deliver it fresh. Yeah. It's weird. It's like when you're used to reciting something a certain way and then all of a sudden you have to do it again but differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very interesting. It was cool. We talked about this before in other panels, but like it was awesome to get dubbed in Japan by like again like like god tier voice actors like oh my gosh. <laughs> like a huge yeah. fan. Um, and then now we got to dub over their performance of our characters. So it was this crazy full circle moment like Barbara was talking about. They, yeah, they dubbed us and then they come by the leader dad. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and also just getting to play around with dubbing more as well, especially in Ruby, like in the original show, obviously, like we, we record our lines and they animate to our performances, but then we had to modify our performances to match the dub. So I, I thought it was a fun challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that was hard. <laughs> okay, because I go in, they, you know, when we record Ruby originally, it's animated after, so I get, like Barbara said, it's just us. The son's like, hey, Neptune, what are you doing? We're going to do it. And then I go to do the dub, and I was like, how do I talk slow? <laughs> <laughs> His mouth isn't moving at all. Yeah. So we had to, like, do a lot of, like, little tweaks to the lines and stuff, yeah. because it just didn't sound like son sometimes, mm -hmm. because I was like, this man, he's like, he's like on ambient. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deliver this sunline and and have it be this normal. So that that was actually like it was a lot of fun, but it was like actually pretty challenging for me. Yeah, it was yeah. tough. Yeah. yeah, all of that. I did like. Um, I know we talked about like, some of the localization was fun too, because I mean just like some some like uh, colloquialisms or slang that especially Ruby has. Like she's very I think like '90s kid. She's like sub bro. Like let's hang out. <laughs> so that didn't exist in the Japanese performance. So then when we translated for Ruby, I got to I got the joy and like the ability to tweak some of the lines and make it a little bit more fun. So I'm, I think I, I think I, at one point I even said like, ah, cool. Like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice right, one, geez. dude. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was definitely the hardest part, most challenging is, is trying to do your original performance, but with the limitations of only doing it in the, you mm -hmm. know, matching that. So that was hard, definitely. It, it's just saying it like, what are you doing? But their mouth's going, what? So you're like, yeah. what are you doing? And then your, your care, they're going, I don't sound like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank you. Hello. Hey. Hi. What's your name? Oh, hey. Um, you look so cute, Caitlin. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Caitlin. Hi, nice twin. to see you. 
I like to see you. Um, I wanted to ask, so we know that all of your characters are based on fairy tale characters or a folk tale character, and there have been lots of different adaptations of all of those fairy tales that they're based on. I wanted to ask what your favorite adaptation of that fairy tale is or what you think your character's favorite adaptation of the fairy tale that like your character is based on is, if that makes Ooh. sense. I have a oh. good, I've got a good one. Oh, oh, I have a good one too. I have a good one too. Okay, so, Akatar is essentially just Beauty and the Beast. It is. <laughs> this is the true. first book. Correct. Yeah, the first book. It's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And I think we all know what kind of books Blake likes to read. So, <laughs> Akatar. That was good. perfect. <laughs> oh, that's my answer. Court of Thorns and Roses. Nailed it. Um, I don't know that there's many adaptations of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Um, she becomes besties. You're like, like the Shrek version, maybe. I mean, oh. the, the, the new P Puss in Boots movie. Dude, I was just thinking Puss in Boots. It's Puss in Boots. Yeah. Puss in Boots yeah. is the newest yeah. one. Yeah. You're pretty, like a, a, mob, a pretty good movie. A mob. Oh, a mob boss? Mob boss, thank you. Mob, I was like, mob, 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 mob gangsta. <laughs> um, I, maybe just like, is Ruby the good adaptation of uh, <laughs> Goldilocks. Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think just the, the normal like one. Rapunzel. The Rapunzel. Yes. She's not Goldilocks. Rapunzel is her own character. Oh no, I thought we were choosing another one. Are we choosing another one or, or our own characters? Um, I was thinking your own characters, but anyway, oh, yeah. fine with me. Kara's distracting you. She's deep. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to say Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> what is oh, I was gonna, uh, Snow White. Yeah. Anyways. Um, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I was gonna make a joke. I don't know if you guys are too young for this reference, but my spoon is too big. <laughs> Yeah. I am a banana. Yeah. I imagine that's alternative universe Goldilocks. Cause my spoon is too big. This spoon is just right. <laughs> I want that to exist. <laughs> Probably. What was the newest Snow White one? Snow White and the Huntsman or something? No, oh. not the newest one. That's oh. the one with Kristen Stewart. That's a good one though. <laughs> okay, I choose that one. <laughs> nice, nice. I like a lot of I like a lot of movies. I like a lot of like cheesy action movies. Doesn't have to be like John Wick. Very good movie. Other movies like like Transporter. Well, Transporter Two is pretty good too, but like J Jason Statham movies, most of them not not good, but they're fun. I love them. <laughs> they're absurd. There's this. <laughs> yes. Someone very passionate hey, about I Jason said Statham. I said I like them. Let's not lie to ourselves, okay? Yeah. Beekeeper was not good. Okay? <laughs> I saw it in theaters. I paid money to see it. It was not good. Okay. There are some. He just makes forty a year. Um, but there was this movie in the late 2000s called The Forbidden Kingdom with Jet Li and um, Jackie Chan. And Jet Li was Sun Wukong in that. I, I love that movie. It's like, a, it's like an isekai movie. Isekai? Where like a kid falls into the other universe. And then at the end of the movie, he learns how to fight. Thank you. No one, no one ever knows what movie that is. So. Thank you. Thank you. We got one. It was the kid, starting the kid from Sky High. Oh, cool. All right. I, know that. I love that movie. I'm trying to think of like any adaptations of Little Red Riding Hood. I'm so uh, hoodwinked here. Hoodwinked. <laughs> yes. That's it. That's the one. Movies. That's the one. Hoodwinked, hoodwinked is so good. So good. They changed the actors around. So funny. That's what I saw. Hoodwinked uh, by myself. I was the only person in the movie theater. I kid you not. And I was cackling by myself. <laughs> I think I was like 16. Yes. Amazing. Okay. Lock it's it a in. great movie. It's Hoodwinked. Great. That's it. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I stand by my answer. <laughs> Thank you. Good question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'll have to go look up more Goldilocks and Three Bears adaptations. Hello. Hello. Oh. <gasps> Hi. Hello. My name's Willow. Hi, Willow. Um, Hello. So, thank you. <laughs> I am a really big Blake and Yang fan. Like, they're my favorites ever. <laughs> so, and as a lesbian, their like sapphic representation in media in general is just, it means so much to me. So I was wondering, when do you think, like who developed feelings first? Or like, when do you think they were like, ooh, this is more than friendship? Or, I feel like we've talked about this. I think we I think we were asked this at another convention we were at and I forget what we said. I, I, feel, I think like, I feel like it was Yang that I think it was Yang realized it first. It, yeah, but it was probably like tried to suppress the feelings a lot because yeah. I think she probably assumed that Blake wouldn't feel the same way or 
you know, yeah. she was still discovering who she really was, and so, like, maybe she was confused at first by the feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of us up here think it was Yang. I think it was if, Yang. If I may, I think this was my answer for that question, too. Personally, I think the first, like, kind of, like, spark of attraction was in volume one when Yang finds the piece of the chest, like, uh, well, what's it, the knight oh. in the forest. Yeah, she goes, I found so a little pony. in one today. Like, oh, you. I was like, that's... Hang on. That's like, cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone, someone gave me uh, one of those today. Oh, nice. Like a chest large, <laughs> a large one. I'm oh yeah. Gonna... Now that a cute little pony. Yes. <laughs> cute. And then she goes, sure. <laughs> Blake's like, mm, you're simple, but you're, you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> She's cute. Yeah, I was wondering if you guys thought they had a crush on each other during the Beacon days, or there was like. Maybe, I but think it's a little glisten of something. I think it's so. One of those, Definitely it's, think so. That sort of feeling you get when you know that you're gonna sit in the same class with your crush. So like you, you try to look really pretty. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I feel like they thought every day. They're like, oh god, oh they, you guys were in the same room. Oh my god, could you imagine <laughs> living in the same room as your crush? Oh yeah. Oh, the things you must have seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take back. Like what, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> like. Bad breath. <laughs> Morning face. I think Michael and I have been married for <laughs> 10 years now. We're like, yeah, we know that game. <laughs> um, if I have like one more thing to say, what you guys just said, sharing a room. My girlfriend got me into Ruby. She was the in the Yang cosplay just right before me. We met, we were sweet mates in college. So we like shared a bathroom. Oh, so, yeah. that's so funny. It's like so good Sweet life. mates to sweethearts. I yeah. Saw oh. Goes. Oh. All right. That's good. I was going to ask who, going for your job. who caught feelings first? I don't know. <laughs> Discuss it amongst us. She, she says it's me, but I don't know. <laughs> Very Blake answer. Yeah. No. <laughs> Stop. That's Thank so you. sweet. Thank I you love so that. Much. Thank you, guys. Thank Thank wonderful you. questions. This Whoa. may have to be our last question. Wait, what? So, I know. A lot of pressure. What time does this panel end? We have 20 minutes. In 5.15? Oh, dang. 14? Okay. Is this not 13? an hour long panel? Dang. Oh, oh dang. Oh, that's a countdown thing right there. I just saw it's, it's a, not a final bomb. countdown. Don't stop the bar. There's a number going bar. down. <laughs> I didn't notice it. If anyone misses get asking their questions, I think after this panel, we're going to have lunch, and then we'll be back at our booth right, right after. So feel free to come down and ask us questions yeah. as well. Absolutely. I love answering questions, because otherwise I'll just sit there, and it'll be weird. I love questioning <laughs> answers. All right. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I also questions. like dead I'm silence. I'm a contrarian. <laughs> if you come to my booth, you can speak to me, but if you don't want to, I love that too. You can sit there in <laughs> silence, and I just give a nod, and it will not be awkward in any way, and we'll both leave and go, that was an excellent experience. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. Just so you know. But before that, you have a question. Yeah. What is your name? Sorry. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Micah. Hi, uh, hi. First, I, I wanted to say thank you for Ruby. I discovered it when I was in that horribly stressful transition between high school and college, and it really helped on an anxiety level, and I just wanted to say thank you for that before my question. I'm so Thank so you. Glad. Yeah, yeah. You're very welcome. Glad to have been a factor that helped you through any hard time. Yeah. 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 I'll be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Team Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did get a few signatures from when Team Juniper and Penny came oh, nice. on yeah. here. Yeah. On a, What's your question? Uh, are there any mythological creatures that you would want to be grim that haven't appeared on the show yet? Faye. Oh my God! <laughs> did you just say Faye? Michael's yeah, Faye. obsessed with Akatar. We do Faye. We could do Batman. We could do like the Adder. We could do the Bog. Man, you know, drop Kelpies. Name drop in here. I don't Kelpies. know. Kelpies. The Surreal. 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 I don't know. Surreal. Oh, I don't listen to it. I read it like like a good book reader. Yeah. I, <laughs> is there yeah a I'm a book purist. Is there a unicorn? Oh, I listen to a whole cast do it. What? I listen on graphic audio, where it's an entire. It is Whoa. graphic. It yeah. is graphic I, audio. We can talk about this. We later. talk about it later, but any yeah. of those. Is there a unicorn grim? No, not, not yet. yet. Uh, there's yeah. the Nuckleby. It's close. Jackalope. Oh, cool. <laughs> I didn't know those weren't real. <laughs> <laughs> I I learned they weren't real when I was about 
25. <laughs> <laughs> Could I pick a non-mythical creature? No. Uh, I'm sure. going to pick a non-mythical creature. Go ahead. Uh, sloth. Oh, nice, cool. okay. A slow but sure death. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they'd be sort of like the elephants. They're just, they don't care. They're here. Yeah. Not, all, yeah. not all grim are violent. Okay, sorry. I will take a moment to note that, like, it's so messed up that Ruby goes, let's kill it. I was like, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Let them do their thing. <laughs> Chill out. Let's kill it. <laughs> um, I've been playing Until Dawn uh, recently because they had a remake that just came out. It's so good. It's so good. So I think, like... It, Along the lines of like mythological and like folklore, a Wendigo would be awesome. I want a Wendigo. Mm. What is that? What's a Wendigo is the Native American grin. folklore creature. Uh, mm -hmm. But they'll, scary. yeah, just don't. Is it doesn't it, really describe what it is. Uh, it's a, it, it, it's a, a kind of like a creature that lives in the woods and you don't see it. It's like, don't whistle at night, it'll come for you. And like a kids. skinwalker type thing. It's kind of like yeah. weird. Sort of like, like a skinwalker cannibal sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But like, like almost vampire y. It's real weird, real bony, and like, yes. I'm gonna get it you. It sounds like a shrimp itself. Right. That's okay. Yeah. Look, you should research it. Like, I'm, I'm in no position to it. Who can do it? it. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a human or a, 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 a jackalope meets like... They kind of look familiar. Like a jackalope. Thank you for your question. <laughs> is, there, is there a particular uh, mythological creature you would like to see? Uh, off the top of my head, Hydrogram. Oh, cool. Nice. Hydrogram? Yeah. We, we have a, 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 a water snake. What are those? You did. Water, oh, water the dragon. sea fey long? <laughs> Sorry, I know we only have one minute left, so I oh, want to make sure we yeah, try Yeah, that to get was the Leviathan. Another question or two if we can. Yeah. Thank right. you so much. Volume 10 confirmation, please. Oh, and I we do fifth, have baby. one minute, so we will rapid fire this lightning round Whew. question. Your name is? Uh, Jason here. You're going to be Luke. faster than that, Jason. Let's go. Okay, uh, first of all, for all Team Ruby, Banzai! Banzai! Question, go! <laughs> okay, um, if you... Jason <laughs> missed the assignment altogether. All right, <laughs> go ahead, Jason. Okay, you're funny. <laughs> anyway, um... um there was back in the day when you did crossover with DC, and I'm pretty sure it could have been better. But anyway, um, <laughs> no offense, but what a weird way to start a question. <laughs> Jason yeah. was like, "I'm going to be the last one. I'm going to throw you know, some shade." Sean could go. have been in it, and it would have been better. We know that. Thank what, what, you. What would have happened in an alternate you. reality if, um, what if you guys crossed over with Marvel instead? Oh, we'd love it. All about it. Oh yeah, Marvel's. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of us love Marvel. I think Ruby and Spider-Man would be best Teen friends. Okay. Captain Wait, America. Blake Belladonna for the X-Men. <laughs> I would love to see uh, Yang and Wonder Woman, although that's DC. So probably Yang and Iron Man if it was Marvel. Oh, yeah. Dude, Sun would hang out with Nightcrawler. Yeah. Yang would probably. Captain America tail. over there. Yang would probably <laughs> hang out with either the Hulk or Captain Marvel. Blake and Rogue. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. Cool. Ooh. Cool. But yeah, Ruby with Spider Man, totally. Oh no, Miles Morales would be my bestie. Oh, what's up? Yeah. Totally. All right. This looks like a good right yeah. Have you guys had a good time this last hour? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Once again, yes, if you did not get your question answered, if you didn't get a chance to ask it, if you come up with something later on, please stop by. They'll also be doing autographs, photos, all of that down at the tables after they've had a chance to eat some lunch. Before you guys leave, we have a request of all of you. We'd like to get a photo with you for the convention's social media account, so you can find those online after the show's over. So if you guys want to fill in the empty space, kind of up here front and center, Whoa. we'll just kind of go to the edge of the stage and okay. get a photo with all of our friends. Okay. Excellent. I'm going to send this to my mom and say, look, mom, you are wrong. Okay. 